Welcome to Spry Online for March 12th. We're so glad you're joining us as we pursue Jesus together. Today, we continue our series called Empty, where we're intentionally leaning into the season of Lent together by talking about ways that we can draw nearer to God leading up to Easter. Let's worship together now.
Thank you so much for worshiping with us online today. A reminder that if you're new to Spry, please fill out a connection card, which you'll find at sprychurch.com connection. If you leave your contact information, we'll be glad to send you church updates, answer your questions, and connect with you as well. Here's a few ways of how you can be part of what God is doing in our church and in our community. During the season of Lent, we're listing practices for spiritual growth in the weekly bulletin in a section called the GPS, the Grow, Pray, Study Guide. You can access the bulletin at spritechurch.com sermons. Then click on the download tab under each sermon. In the bulletin, you'll find information on upcoming events, a prayer list, and a Grow, Pray, Study Guide, listing ways for individuals, families, or groups to go deeper as we follow Jesus together. This week, in response to God's provision in your life, we encourage you to help us provide for those in need by supporting our church's food pantry. The list is, is in the bulletin and calls attention to the most needed items as we serve and love our neighbors together. Thank you in advance for your generous giving. And now Pastor Ken will lead us in our prayer. Let's pray. Holy God, we thank you that you call us and invite us into your presence to come and worship you. Speak to us, Father, that we may hear your word and grow closer to you by your grace through our faith in Jesus Christ. Come Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this week is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 21. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be unable to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which is not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. This mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and sharers together in the promise of Christ Jesus. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace, given me through the working of His power. Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, for which ages past was kept hidden in God, who created all things. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms, according to His eternal purpose that He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Him and through faith in Him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God, and thanks be to God. We spend much of our daily lives trying to avoid getting to empty. But we know what it's like to be empty, even as we fill our lives with so much. We can have full hands, but still have empty hearts and emptiness within. What if, in our emptiness, we could be filled? What if it's by pouring ourselves out that we find and share the fullness of life? By emptying ourselves, we follow the way of Jesus as we
Thon is the 46-hour dance marathon fundraiser at Penn State. Maybe you've heard of it. The money funds critical research into pediatric cancer. It also covers the cost of treatment for nearly 5,000 families receiving care at Penn State Children's Hospital in Hershey. 2023's THON set a new fundraising record, over $15 million. Over 700 dancers stood the entire 46 hours from a Friday evening until Sunday afternoon. The grandmother of one of the dancers is part of Spry Church, and she was so proud of her granddaughter. THON is the largest student-run philanthropy in the world. It requires the dedication of thousands of Penn State students throughout the year leading up to THON weekend. Imagine staying awake for 46 hours straight. That's actually not that hard to imagine for these people. They're college students, right? But imagine being one of them, staying on your feet, dancing for 46 hours straight. As you think about this, at some point you probably begin to wonder, why? Why would people do this? One of the participants said, you're doing this for a reason. You're standing for a cure for pediatric cancer. And there's nothing more motivating to me to keep standing and keep fighting. A cause that's compelling will lead people to go to extraordinary lengths and to give generously. Can you imagine that? In an even more amazing way, at the heart of the Christian faith is a stunning claim. God has identified a cause so compelling that he has gone to extraordinary lengths to give generously toward it. What is that cause? The salvation of the world and the salvation of your soul. I want to talk to you today about the question, can you imagine that? It's a mystery, really. And that's the word Paul uses to describe God's marvelous plan for the Gentiles. People like you and me, non-Jewish people. In the world of the Bible, people fit into one of two categories, Jews or Gentiles. In the ancient world, there was a significant line of demarcation between the two groups. You were either Jewish or Gentile, non-Jewish. And that was thought to be a core part of your identity and what defined you. Scripture tells us that God, the creator of all things, chose a particular people as his own, the Jewish people. God called them to be his treasured possession. Even when God's people turned away and their love failed, God's love remained steadfast. He delivered his people from captivity, established a covenant, a holy relationship, to be their sovereign God, and spoke to them through the prophets. All these promises God gave specifically to Israel, the Jewish people, his people. Then, in the fullness of time, God did something amazing and extraordinarily generous. The one true God came into the world in Jesus Christ. When the set time had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, to save us. God gave us Jesus. And Jesus was Himself a Jew, yet He came for everybody, Jews and Gentiles. He came to give of Himself to be our Savior. In his letter to the Ephesians, Paul reflects on what God has done for those of us who are Gentiles. He writes, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one. Through him, we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. This is an act of sheer generosity. God didn't have to allow Gentiles into the covenant, but he chose to do that. And he did it by giving of himself, even to the point of death on a cross. That means no one is beyond the reach of God's grace, his kindness, unmerited favor, and forgiving love. This is the God we serve. Can you imagine that? Consider how God gives to us, how God gives to you. And how specifically does God give? Our passage today points to three ways. God gives intentionally. Paul was raised in the Jewish tradition. At the time, he had the name Saul. And then, as he was persecuting Christians, he actually encountered 
Jesus. His life was changed. He took on a new name to reflect his new identity, the name Paul. God gave Paul a mission to share the good news with the Gentiles. This was part of God's plan. It wasn't random. God had given Paul this calling intentionally. And Paul writes to these Gentiles and to you and me, Surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. That is the mystery made known to me by revelation. The best novelists are able to write in such a way that as you read through a story, the ending is a mystery. But when you look back from the end, the clues were there all along. The same goes for good movies. As you're watching the story unfold, the ending is a mystery. But looking back from the end, you can see that the clues were there all along. In this passage, the Apostle Paul tells us that God has revealed the mystery of Christ. Paul writes about the mystery made known to me by revelation, the mystery of Christ. Jesus is the climax of God's great plan for the world. Paul writes, I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Paul's task is to bring out in the open and make plain what God, who created all this in the first place, has been doing in secret and behind the scenes all along. By faith, both Jews and Gentiles can now approach God on equal terms. God was intentional about this. His intent was that now, through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. God gave his grace to Paul intentionally, and he gives his grace to us the same way, according to his eternal purpose that he accomplished in Jesus Christ. God gives intentionally. Also, this letter teaches us that God gives selflessly. Paul speaks of the boundless riches of Christ. He later refers to Christ's glorious riches. The riches of Jesus are unlimited and magnificent. God doesn't keep those riches to himself. He shares them with us freely. Jesus gives selflessly. He gives of himself for us. He did that on the cross where he laid down his life. He gave up everything. He did this so that we could share in his life, so that we, broken and self-absorbed as we are, could be healed and forgiven and renewed and could come to participate in God's own life and love. This is self-giving love, and it's the very nature of God. When we stop and consider that this is who God is, this is what Jesus has done and has given for you and me and for the world that he so loves, When we stop and consider what this means and the power of what God has done, it should lead us to breathless wonder. Can you imagine that this is who God is and this is how much He loves us? Can you imagine that? God gives intentionally. He gives selflessly. He also gives wisely. God has given us of Himself according to His eternal purpose that He accomplished in Jesus Christ. This is a very wise way of giving. It is effective. This giving has achieved its purpose. It has achieved the outcome that God intended. And that outcome is this. In Jesus and through faith in Him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we can now approach God with freedom and confidence. We don't have to be held back in bondage, afraid or ashamed. Because of God's extraordinary generosity in Jesus Christ, you can approach God with freedom and confidence. Can you imagine that? This is according to God's eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. God has already done it. It is finished. Jesus is the Savior. He died and now he is alive. The way, the truth, and the life. In him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. Paul says, so don't be discouraged because of my sufferings for you. He was suffering for them, imprisoned because of the gospel and because of his desire to give of himself for the sake of others. Paul sees his sufferings in light of the gospel and tells God's people in Ephesus, don't be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Paul had no idea that God would use his suffering and his words here to become part of of the Bible and the story of redemption and, and, 
and that these words would be read by literally billions of people all around the world throughout the rest of history. But he was willing to give of himself and trust God with the results. The glory of God is shown even through suffering, Paul's sufferings, and our own sufferings, whatever they may be. Can you imagine that? God gives intentionally. God gives selflessly. God gives wisely. What we see in Paul is what God wants to work out in our own lives. God empowers us to give intentionally. As this gift of God's grace was given to Paul, he gives it in intentional ways to others. God empowers us to give selflessly. Paul gives of himself for the sake of others, and we're called to do the same. And God empowers us to give wisely, to invest in the work of the kingdom and the eternal purposes of God. It's a mystery, but this is God's plan from all eternity. For God himself to give intentionally, to give selflessly, and to give wisely, and for God to invite us to live in grateful response in ways that are shaped by God's generosity. Giving intentionally, giving selflessly, giving wisely, and confident that it counts for something in God's kingdom. And no gift offered for the sake of the gospel is ever wasted. But everything we give for God's kingdom brings a return for his glory. Why is God so generous toward us? Why is generosity the way of God? Why does God give so generously and empower us to give generously? The answer comes at the end of our passage today in a beautiful prayer. And that answer in a single word is love. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long, and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. God is so generous because he wants us to know his great love. Back to Thon, that marathon where for 46 hours straight, students dance to raise funds toward a cure for pediatric cancer. They do this in the huge basketball arena on main campus and in the words of one of the leaders, there's just this spirit of hope and love that pervades every single inch of the space. God's desire is in an even greater way for the same to be said of the church. Can you imagine that? What if the church so overflowed with the reality of the presence and the love of Jesus that people said there's, there's just this spirit of hope and love that pervades every single inch of the space? What if the church, despite all our frailties and infirmities, truly reflected the glory of God as a community of generosity, of hope and love? Can you imagine that? I invite you to imagine that and to join me in these closing words. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your extraordinary generosity, giving intentionally, selflessly, and wisely for the sake of this world that you so love, for us and for our salvation. Thank you, Lord, that by your grace, we who were once far from you have been brought near, that through Jesus Christ, your word to every single person is yes, you can come. Yes, you are invited because Jesus has said, come to me, 
all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Lord, would you shape us by this generous love that you've shown us in Jesus and form our lives, form our desires, form our hearts, form our habits and our ways of being and living, that by your grace, by your power at work within us, we would draw close to you and play our part in giving intentionally, selflessly, and wisely for the sake of your kingdom, for your honor and glory, for the good of others. In Jesus' name we pray. And now we pray together the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now in response to God's word to us today, I invite you to join me in this act of worship as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. These words that point to the generosity of God, the goodness, the love of God, and what God is doing in our lives and in our world. What do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Here at Sprite Church, we're invited to pursue the way of Jesus together. For every one of us, that includes serving, giving, and praying. So your invitation today is to be part of what God is doing here, to join a team and help us continue to be a light in our community for Jesus and to make his name known. You can pick up a serve sheet on the lobby of either physical campus at School Street or Pine Grove, or visit spritechurch.com serve to learn more about opportunities to find joy in serving here at Spry. And you're also invited to give. Your giving helps us share the love and hope of Jesus with others. And finally, you're invited to pray. Pray for our ministries and pray for each other as we walk together as a community towards what God has for us. Thank you for your serving, your giving, and your prayers. God is at work here in our community, and we're excited to continue pursuing Jesus together and to help others know the truth of His love and grace.
Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe Live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are And fill me with your heart Thank you for worshiping with us today. This week, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen.